Parallel processing refers to the process of simultaneous execution of tasks using various computing resources. In parallel computing, efficiency is key. The task has to be divided in such a manner that it executes in minimum time. When not implemented correctly, it can take longer than in single processing scenario. The task can be divided among several resources, e.g. a cluster of computers. In parallel computing, a node is an individual computer in a box. Typically it is comprised of numerous CPUs or cores or processors, network interfaces, memory, etc. These are networked simultaneously to encompass a supercomputer. In the past years, a central processing unit, otherwise abbreviated as the CPU, was the sole execution part of a computer. However these days a CPU typically has numerous cores. Each of these offers an exclusive affecting unit. Then the CPUs are included in a node. Let's look at the commonly used terminologies in parallel computation research. A task is a logically distinct section of computational effort. Typically it is a set of program instructions you are running on the processor. In parallel processing or computing, numerous tasks are executed simultaneously. The term pipelining refers to the splitting of a task into steps performed by various processing units. Inputs then stream through like an assembly stripe. Shared memory is an important concept. From the hardware's point of view, it is just like a computer architecture in which all cores or processors have straight access to regular physical memory. However from the software point of view, it is a model in which concurrent tasks are having the consistent picture of memory. The software can then directly address and access the logical memory locations, in spite of the place where physical memory really exists. Symmetric Multiprocessor, abbreviated as SMP, is a hardware architecture in which several processors share a solitary address space and have the capability to access all resources. As for the term distributed memory, from a hardware point of view, it is just like a network-based memory access used for physical memory. From a programming point of view, tasks can just rationally see local machine memory and have to use communications to access memory built into other machines where other tasks are executing. Normally, parallel jobs need to swap data. One of the techniques by which this can be accomplished is via a shared memory bus, otherwise over a network. Regardless of the technique however, this data exchange is normally referred to as communications. Synchronization is frequently linked with communications. It involves the synchronization of parallel jobs in genuine time. Commonly, it's implemented by establishing a coordination point within an application where a job may not carry on until other tasks reach the same more logically comparable point. Naturally, synchronization involves some waiting for at least another task. Thus it leads to an increase in execution time. Granularity, within the context of parallel computation, is a qualitative measure of the proportion of computation to communication. Parallel overhead is simply the amount of time necessary to coordinate parallel tasks, rather than their execution. Scalability refers to the ability of a parallel system to divulge a balanced increase in parallel speedup with the addition of additional compute resources. Performance measuring involves having a set of metrics that is used for quantifying the quality of an algorithm. For instance, the quality of sequential algorithms is evaluated in terms of time and space. However, for the quality of a parallel algorithm, it depends on the parallel architecture and the number of processors employed. Parallel runtime is the time taken by a program which is executed on an end processor parallel computer. Speedup is the important measure of parallel computing. It measures how much faster a parallel algorithm runs with respect to the best sequential one. Amdahl's law is often used to forecast the theoretical highest speedup using numerous processors. According to this law, the speedup of a program using numerous processors in parallel computing is restricted by the sequential portion of the program. As for the Gustafson's law, the increase of the problem size for larger machines can retain scalability with respect to the number of processors. Please remember to subscribe to our channel. Also click the bell icon so that you are notified of our future content. Have a good day.